So before I talk about the vaccines, I have a parenthesis to talk about the drugs, the therapeutics, because everybody always talks about the therapeutics. And my message is twofold. The first one is that we have a number of novel products that could be promising, but we uh, have, and we start to have good supportive evidence. What we mean from that is that we are starting to get information from animal studies using the appropriate models, etc. The problem with these products is that we have very little of them, okay? Very little of them. The second type of products that we have are products who are licensed for another purpose. So we call them repurpose products. They, have, they are in the market with another indication. But for these products, we have very weak evidence that they indeed will work against Ebola. So you have these two contradictions. And this is very important because in the, with the aim of help, or with the aim of making profit, many people are making many claims about these products. So we have in WHO what we call the STAC EE, is the Scientific and Technical Advisory Committee. This is a committee of independent experts who have already met via teleconference and face-to-face, -face, and they are focused on three things. The first one is they review the pipeline. It means they go through all the products that people make aware to us, all the products that we know are in the literature, and we try, to, as Pierre said, focus on being evidence-based. Okay? And then the, this is reviewed, and then decisions are, are made and recommendations, not on use or no use, but on how strong is the evidence that this product may work against Ebola. We also have reviewed the protocols that people are proposing on how to assess these products in the field. And we, we don't tell people, don't go ahead and do your study or just do your study, but we tell them from the methodological point of view what are the weaknesses and the strengths of the proposed study design. We keep an eye on it, so there is a regular review of all the products in the pipeline. So three messages. We are monitoring what happens with the products, evidence-based. We have products that look promising, but we have a small amounts today. There are products that we have large amounts that are licensed for another reason, but for which we don't have evidence that they work against Ebola. So the second part, moving into the vaccines, we are trying to organize a comprehensive plan. So you see, we go from clinical trials to really scaling up the production and having the enablers, the possibility of having these vaccines given to people. Today, our focus is on clinical trials and regulatory and safety. Why? Because this is an unprecedented situation. We are compressing the time periods, but we are very, very, very conscious that we should not compromise the quality and the, re the process for evidence-based review of these products. So we are focusing on putting the processes in place with colleagues from the FDA in the United States, the European Medical Agency, uh, Health Canada, and all the regulators and ethicists from Africa, from the countries where the studies are taking place and from the Ebola-affected countries. Now, which vaccines? So there are many vaccines that are named and mentioned in the press. There are two that are more advanced, and in our world, more advanced means that there are studies in humans going on, clinical studies. So there are two vaccines, one vaccine that is called the BSB vaccine, short name, because it uses a animal virus, the, virus, the viral stomatitis virus as a vector. So it takes a piece of the Ebola virus that helps the immune system to recognize it, and it's inserted into the structure of this virus, and this virus carries it on. And this vaccine has the possibility of replicating. So this virus, the BSB virus, maintains the ability to reproduce, okay? But it's not unsafe. So don't imagine that it's going to be a mutant virus replicating. It's all documented the safety in animals so far, okay? And now we are having data in humans. The other vaccine also uses a vector, and it's this is the chimpanzee adenovirus, and it also has a piece of the virus inside the chimpanzee adenovirus so that the immune system can recognize it and protect the host against Ebola. So these two vaccines are, and there are many other vaccines in this graph. These are the vaccines who we call are in preclinical development. It means that all the data that we have about them today come from laboratory studies, come from animal studies. 
Several of them, as you see in the corner, January 2015, are planning to move forward to clinical phase next year. So in jargon terms, we have what is called a healthy pipeline, and we should maintain that pipeline health. So let's focus on the two that are in clinical evaluation. They are color-coded here, so the child vaccine that is from GSK is in green, and the BSB vaccine that is from New Link and now Merck is in purple. So you see, in September, October, four phase one trials, four studies in humans to assess safety started. The main purpose of this study is safety evaluation. In addition to evaluating whether or not the vaccine is safe, we look into which dose is the most adequate to vaccinate humans, okay? One nose behind is the BSB vaccine. Just one month later, we started to have six clinical trials, phase one again, focusing on safety. So before I move on, these studies don't tell you if the vaccine is effective against Ebola. It tells you if when given to humans, the vaccine is safe. So when you hear the results of these trials, you think, okay, these trials are going to tell me if this vaccine is safe. But then you have to move on so the second phase is to do phase two trials. So these phase two trials, the previous ones have 20, 30 people in each trial. In the phase two trials, you have more people because you want to be able to detect adverse events with more power. So you include more individuals. So there are four trials organized in Africa, okay, with the GSK vaccine that are planned in four African countries who are not affected by Ebola yet. And in these trials, they are going to also include children and pregnant women, also to see if it's safe to vaccinate. For this Ebola vaccine, we don't have what is what we call in our jargon a correlator protection. So it's not possible to take blood samples, measure the antibody titers, and say, hey, everybody above this title is protected. We don't have that yet. But we are going to collect data to learn how the vaccine uh, induces a response from the immune system. How can we, if we give the vaccine to people, how the immune system responds? So this is immunogenicity assessment too. But it will still not tell us if the virus can be, if the infection by this virus can be prevented by this vaccine, okay? So the next phase is to do phase three trials. So these are called efficacy trials. So it tells you if the individual who is vaccinated is protected against Ebola. And we are organizing those in Ebola-affected countries, because you need to be exposed to the virus to see if you are... You need to be, expo Hello? You need to be exposed to the virus to see if it protects you, okay? So these are in three countries, and each of the trials... Maybe I don't need the microphone. Each of the trials... Um, we'll use a different strategy, okay? So the study in Sierra Leone will use what is called a randomized control trial. So randomized means that the people who are participants in the trial don't know which intervention they are going to receive, okay? And it's controlled because there is a mechanism to follow up everybody in the trial. And three products are going to be used in this trial in Liberia. The BSB vaccine, the Merck New Link vaccine, the GSK vaccine, the Shad 3 vaccine, and the Cell vaccine that is already licensed product. Okay? And it's a large study, about nine to 10,000 people in each of the arms. Total around 30,000 people, and it's, it's going to be in Monrovia, the capital of Liberia. It's organized by the government of Liberia with a strong collaboration from the National Institute of Health in America. Okay, and you divide the cake into slices, okay? 
and you want you in the end you are going to eat the entire cake. But you start by one slice at the time. Okay, so you take one slice and then the slices who are not vaccinated yet serve as a comparison for you. So you take one suppose my cake has four So eventually everybody gets vaccinated, but only that you do it in the steps. The third study design is in Guinea. That is, and the, the study design in Sierra Leone, CDC is taking the lead again, close collaboration with the government and the partners in the field. The third study design is re-vaccination. I am taking the time to explain this because it's important when you communicate with the communities. The re-vaccination study, you remember a smallpox eradication? In a smallpox eradication, when there was a case in a community, they will come and vaccinate all the people around that case. It was called re okay? And because the Ebola transmits person to person, close contacts, the barriers, all that, we think that if we, we, it's, a, it's an hypothesis, okay? It's, this is research, that maybe if we vaccinate all the contacts around this person in a geographical area, you could reduce the transmission and maybe stop it. Okay, so this green vaccination. Now, how, when are we going to have results? Probably in the first quarter of 2015, we are going to start learning if, from these trials, but not the final result, but we will start listening to what happened. So if I put all what I said in a big perspective, so we are in the phase one trial, September, October. We are going to start soon after the phase two trials, and we will have initial data from the phase one trials in December. Okay, so you will hear in the news that there is what a publication yesterday in the New England Journal of Medicine of one of my uh, 10 boxes, you remember I showed 10 boxes of phase one. One was published yesterday, but we hope to have the results of the 10 boxes in December. That's very important, because then we can say, okay, now we can move to the next step, that is phase two. Now we know it's safe in humans, let's move to the next step. And then we will have a start the phase three trials in the first quarter of 2015, and we hope to have early efficacy results in the first quarter, in the second quarter of 2015. But look at the top. We are, have these viruses planning. So we don't know if the vaccine will work. We don't know if the vaccine will be efficacious or safe. But we are planning. In the case it works, we are ready. So how we are planning? So the, the issue of whether or not we use the vaccine in this outbreak is a complex issue. It's not just to have the results from the research. We will have to have the evidence and safety and efficacy, but we will have to have the supply. We need to have enough doses to vaccinate the people, okay? We will have to know how we are going to vaccinate, that we're going to vaccinate all the population, only the frontline workers, only the adults, only the people in the affected districts. That has to be a scientific evidence-based decision. Uh, sometimes you want to decide from the heart, but my brain of epidemiologist tells me that it's better to decide with the brain and the data, okay? So we have to get that data. And then the other thing is we need to discuss the risks and benefits. What we mean in our jargon is that when you give an intervention, you have to see how much you gain from the intervention, okay, compared to the alternatives and what are the risks involved in giving your intervention. So that, that is what we are going to do. And it all depends on where we are in the curve of the outbreak. And just to finalize, we are thinking that if we prepare for, for these campaigns, for this use of the vaccines, besides the typical campaign considerations, <coughs> it will be very important to have some special considerations for Ebola vaccine, and this is where you come really handy because the community acceptance of this vaccine will be an issue. How are they going to understand that? If in the beginning we don't have vaccine for everybody and we have to make public health decisions, how we are going to communicate that to the people? How are we going to explain that? If we even have vaccine for everybody, but the data suggests that we don't have to vaccinate everybody, how we are going to communicate that, okay? 
The other issue is the logistics. If the vaccine now requires minus 70 degrees centigrade to store, to transport. So we need to develop the logistics in places where you heard the logistics are not in place. We will need to find the vaccinators again, the nurses, the doctors, build the system to collect the information. We know that the immunization program, the routine program in this context is already affected. Half of the children are not receiving the vaccines. We will soon have problems with other disease, measles, just to start with. So my message for you is the vaccine is not the magic bullet. We in WHO are working as hard as we can with all the partners to promote these uh, pro uh, evaluations as soon as possible. But we are conscious this is not the magic bullet. We don't want you to say, let's wait until the vaccine comes. This is not the message. We want the message of Pierre to go across, that we cannot be complacent, that we are far away from finishing this job, and we should do it like the first day. That's the message. And I will stop with that. Thank you very much. <laughs>